YouTube, what is up? I am back again and let me just close my window. I am going to be doing a player ratings video. Um, if you have not checked out the video that I just did regarding a match review, raw reaction of the Olympiacos Arsenal game. We got the one nil, come on you gunners. Please go do check that out because right now I am going to do a player ratings video. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Burn Leno. Now, I initially thought Martinez would be starting this game and it looks like that Arteta sees the, the number one goalkeeper being the number one goalkeeper in all competitions. Hey, I've got no problem with that. I like Martinez as a goalkeeper, but at the end of the day, the best goalkeeper should be starting every game and that is clearly how Arteta sees it as well. What Leno had to do, he did. He, had a, he made a decent save in the first half. Um, I think it was off a header which he sort of palmed wide and in the second half he also made a decent, quite a, a pretty good save actually where it was another header down. Yes, it was at him, but he had needed to have good reflexes to get down to that. And he's just looking safe and he's always reliable for us, let's be real. Leno has been one of our better signings over the last three to four years, particularly because we lost Chesney and you know a lot of people are devastated about that. Leno was a fantastic replacement and you know, looks like Leno's going to be playing pretty much all games this year. I can't see Martinez getting any other sort of game time, maybe in the FA Cup. Um, but generally, looks like Leno is now our Europa League goalkeeper as well. He didn't have a lot to do, but based off what he did do, I am going to give Leno a 7. Um, simply because he made two pretty good saves and kept a clean sheet at the end of the day. Um, who am I going to go with next? I am going to go with Socrates at right back. I think Socrates in the first half was getting completely rinsed. It didn't help that he had a bummyang down that right-hand side who looked like a lost cause most of the game when he was particularly playing on the right. Um, but it's just not his position, and I don't think it's entirely his fault that he didn't have the greatest of games, uh, simply because Arteta was the one picking the team and playing him out there. Saying that, though, I think he had a much better second half. I think the whole team defensively lifted a lot more in the second half and is a lot more reliable, was, was sort of not getting caught out as much because they were going down that right-hand side every single time in the first half, trying it more in the second, but Socrates sort of got a bit more of his... He got his bearings a lot better and he wasn't getting caught out as much. And, um, yeah, I just don't think he was great, but he did what he had to do, I guess. And, you know, he always... What he's got to say about Socrates is that he will always give 100% and I'll give him credit for that. Um, for me, he gets uh, gets um, gets a six. Nothing, nothing special for me. David Luiz. Uh, I thought David Luiz was not as dominant as he has always has been. I don't think he's passing. Didn't have the opportunity to put some of those long passes like he usually does. Um, and he was doing a couple of rash things at the first half. He was getting caught out, particularly when they were crossing the ball. He did something really stupid in the second half where he took on, beat a player, and looked to shoot from a really unnecessary angle. Um, but then again, you, what can you say? A defender's job is to keep a clean sheet, and we kept the clean sheet. David Luiz is always that calming figure, and I think he has been one of the main reasons why our whole defensive unit has completely changed. He's just calming, much more of a calming influence, not as rash. Don't think he was anything special today, but I think he was better than Socrates, so I'm going to give him a 6.5, 6.5. 6 now, who would have thought I'm saying this? In my opinion, Shocker than Mustafi was man of the match. I, I know Lacazette scored, and I know Ceballos came off well on the bench, and I think Saka had a very good game. I will get to him in the moment. But let's be real. Mustafi won every header. He won most of his tackles. He looked the more assured defender out of the central defenders today. And some of the long balls that he was putting out, out wide were pretty much sticking most of the time. He wasn't giving the ball away. I can't believe how much he's changed. I cannot believe how much of an impact he has made since Arteta has come in and since Arteta has thrown him in, let's be real, you can't drop Mustafi right now. I repeat, I can't believe I'm saying this, but you cannot drop Mustafi right now. I don't really remember him not winning a header today. I don't remember him not winning a tackle. Positionally, he was smart. He made the right decisions of when to press onto the central midfielders or the centre forward. And, I mean, his composure has completely changed. And for me, I think he was probably the main reason why we kept a clean sheet. I'm going to give him an 8 today. I don't think anyone deserves over an 8. I don't think we were great, generally speaking, in the game. I mentioned that in my match review. Please do go check that out. It's the video before this one, just released. Um, so, yeah, he gets an 8 for me, and onwards and upwards for him, because he's really showing a lot of intent and a lot of improvement. Back, uh, Bakayo Saka. I almost said Bakary Saka there. Um, 
Uh, he was my second man of the match today. Again, the only reason why I don't think he got man of the match is just because I think Mustafi was close to outstanding. He was beating players on the left very easily. Again, he was our main attacking threat pretty much 70 to 80% of the game. He was beating players. He was putting the ball in. Um, and always, like Arsenal, we're always looking stronger down that left-hand side. Saka didn't really link up as much as Martinelli. I just don't think that Martinelli necessarily got himself in the greatest positions either. Um, but for me, Saka is going to get a 7.5. And, and ultimately, he put that crisp through ball in the end, or that cross in in the end, that got us the goal, got Lacazette's goal, onwards and upwards for him. Um, who did I just mention in the back line? I just mentioned the back line. So I am going to go with defensive midfielders. I'm going to go with Matteo Guendouzi. I would have said the Guendouzi in the first half was about a 4 or a 3 out of 10. I think that he was pretty, pretty poor. I think he was just getting caught out positionally all the time. He was making these rash sort of decisions um, in respects to when to move forward and when to sort of hold his position. And yeah, I just think that Guendouzi wasn't his best performance, but what I will give him credit for is that he must, someone must have said something to him at halftime because he looked a lot more aware of where he positioned himself at the center mid. Because as I mentioned in my match review, please do go check that out. We were getting broken through the middle like the old Arsenal under Emery uh, a lot in the, in the first half. And Guendouzi was a reason of that because he was just, for whatever reason, just getting caught out in those sort of areas. Um, and he just, yeah, they were just running straight through. And I think he was the main reason. But he held it back together again quite well in the second half. He's always, I like his energy. He's always looking to show a lot of energy, always looking to push forward. And, um, you know, fair play to him because I think he really improved a lot more in the, you know, in the second half. So for me, um, he gets a... Uh, what would I give him? Okay, I'd give him probably a six, nothing too special. Um, who am I going to rate next? I am going to rate next... Um, who? Who will I do? Centre midfield, Jacker. Again, not one of his best games, but I think, you know, centre midfielders, I didn't think it helped that Guendouzi was struggling a lot in the first half. I think Gwen, uh, Jacker was solid without being brilliant. He didn't really put a foot wrong, but actually in the first half, I do remember he was... Caught out of position a lot and looked back at times to his sloppy self. At the end of the day, he was pretty solid in the second. Our midfield really short up, but nothing too special. I'm going to give him a six. Uh, Martinelli, I didn't think was great today at left mid. Um, yeah, he just couldn't really get in the game. And I know he tried. And I think at times when he was pressing, he was probably committing himself too much. And they were just playing that pass forward out wide. And he had to do a lot of unnecessary running. And yeah, I just didn't think he got himself in the game today. It's not his fault. It just... One of those games, it's hard for a young kid. First sort of big test in Europe. I know he's played in the group stage, but it's a lot different. And um, yeah, ultimately, uh, at the end of the day, he did okay, but you know, nothing too special. So for me, he's going to get a, probably a five and a half. Attacking midfield, I'm, I'm gonna give Willock a four. I thought Willock was the worst player in the field today. His passing decisions were poor. His positionally, probably his pressing wasn't fantastic. His link-up play at times was non-existent. He just couldn't get himself into the game. I said this in my match review. I think he needs to go out on loan. Um, he, I don't think he's ready for this level yet. I like his tenacity. He does put in effort at times, you know, closing down. And he worked very hard till the end. But at the end of the day, you know, I just don't think Willick is that sort of... I don't know. He is probably not that player that we need at attacking midfield right now. So Willick, for me, gets a four. Obviously, he's a young player, but, you know, I just think there's a lot more room for improvement for him. Um, what who am I going to give a rating to next? I'm going to give a rating to... Who was on the right-hand side? Oh, how could I forget? Aubameyang. I just said that Willock was probably the poorest on the field. I think Aubameyang was probably very close. I'm going to give Aubameyang a four and a half. Um, I don't think a lot of it was his fault. I think Arteta needs to stop trying this... Uh, a bummyang on the wing thing it's not working he, we, we, he looks a shadow of his player out wide he's never yeah he was a winger at times for Dortmund but he's not as quick as he was and it's just it's not the same team a Dortmund at that time played a lot more counter-attack yeah we're trying to do that at times but you know his crossing is was okay in the first half he did put a decent cross into Lacazette which you just missed but he just looks lost out there you know, and defensively he didn't offer much at all particularly with Socrates who's also a makeshift right back Bumiang was a makeshift right midfield. He, we were just getting dominated down that side. And 
he came uh, alive a lot more when he got put on his preferred side on the wing, although I don't think he should play on the wing on the left. Um, he came alive a lot more and looked more vibrant, but just it shouldn't happen. Arteta is not ruining Aubameyang, but he's he's sort of not getting the most potential out of him, playing him outright. So for me, Aubameyang is going to get a four and a half, never was in the game. Lacazette, um, don't think he was great either, um, but he didn't really get a lot of service. He had that one chance, which I think he should have buried in the first half, but you know, strikers do miss chances at times. He was close. He put in an effort. He tried to link up, but I think the midfield attacking-wise, we really struggled until Ceballos came on. So, yeah, at the end of the day, I just don't think that, you know, he really offered a lot. But at the end of the day, he got the goal. He scored. So he got himself in the right position. He worked hard till the end and he got rewarded. He's been rewarded for his hard work. It hasn't always worked out for him, but it looks like that's now two goals in two games. You know, he's looking to get some confidence back. Uh, you know, if he didn't score, I probably would have given him a five, but I'm just going to move him up to a probably a six. Maybe you could some say was harsh, but at the end of the day, what did he really do uh, well? He didn't really do anything to crash hot. So for me, Lacazette's going to get, yeah, six. Danny Ceballos, who came off the bench, he was on the field for half an hour. Um, he was a little bit slow to start, but ultimately it's his sort of style of player that changed the game for us. I don't think he was amazing, but what he can do very well is that he can always look to, he always looks to move the ball forward. He rarely looks to play it back. He always has a sense of urgency when we're looking to attack as a unit. And he was playing a lot more balls out wide. And then when we brought Nicolas Pepe on, we looked like a completely different team going forward. Obviously, Arteta's plan probably was to absorb the pressure by Olympiacos, and we did do that at times. Um, but Ceballos did change the game just because he, yeah, you know, he's a, he's a good player. And I think attacking-wise, he should be playing attacking midfield this season. No Ozil, no Willick. It should be him. We should play um, Torreira and Xhaka behind him, and we look like a very much more solid midfield unit. For me, Ceballos is going to get a 740 did off the bench. Nicolas Pepe, I think, changed the game for the last 12 minutes or 15 minutes he was on the field. I think no, he wasn't on long enough to rate him, but just his direct running and, um, you know, the, the natural winger that he is, because let's be real, we're only playing one natural ring, winger for pretty much the majority of the game. Well, yeah, we did the whole game because Aubameyang stayed on. So he offers something that no one else in the team can, let's be real. So for me... He changed the game because he was directly running at players. He was causing a problem. He's a great player to bring off the bench. For me, Pepe probably gets a... You can't really rate him, but if I had to rate him for what he did on the field, I'm also going to give him a 7 as well. But yeah, as I said in my other video, it wasn't the best performance, but we still got the win. Olympia cost very difficult to break down at home. So clean sheet, 1-0 onwards and upwards. That's all I have time for with my player ratings video, guys. Please go check out my other video that I did before on um, the match review. Please do go check that out. Stick a like on that. Any comments or feedback, much appreciated. Any video ideas, let me know. But thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic day and talk to you soon.